In this video, I'm going to compare the Super Tacoma 50 f1.4 8 elements lens with the later 7 elements version. There's a lot of interest online in these lenses. They built up a very strong and positive reputation over the past 55 plus years. The 8 elements lens is the one with the cult status. It's more sought after and more expensive. But is it really any better optically? And what are the specific differences in performance between the versions? I've had my own more anecdotal views about the relative performance of the two lenses, but I felt it was time to do some more rigorous tests and share the results with you. And at the end of the video, I'll discuss whether I think the 8 elements lens is worth the significant premium in price over the 7 elements lens, or whether the results are too similar to really make a difference. Before comparing the performance of the two Super Tacomas, I think it's important to give you a quick account of the history of all the 50 f1.4 Tacoma lenses. The lenses were made in Japan between 1964 and 1975 by the Asahi Optical Company, who I'll call AOC from now on. All the lenses had M42 screw mounts and were designed for AOC's excellent Pentax Spotmatic cameras. The cameras and lenses helped AOC become the top-selling manufacturer of SLR gear worldwide for a while, targeted at photographers who value good quality camera gear at a reasonable cost. Not only were AOC highly innovative in the features they introduced to help photographers, such as in-camera, through-the-lens stop-down metering, for example, the build quality of the cameras and lenses was extremely high, maybe not as indestructible as the heavier and more expensive Nikon F range, but still very well made. It's a testament to how well Takuma lenses were made, and how much owners love their gear, that so many lenses remain today in such good condition. There were four main versions of the Takuma 50 f1.4 lenses, with some minor cosmetic changes in between. The first Super Takuma was introduced in 1964, designed with eight elements in six groups. A short production run meant that few of these lenses were made relative to later versions, and this has added to the mystique of the lens. Not that it's that hard to find copies online for sale, if you're prepared to pay the price. In 1965, AOC decided to replace the 8-element version with a 7-element version. At some stage, they also introduced a new glass formula involving the use of radioactive elements, and my copy of the 7-element lens is radioactive. There are various theories about why AOC decided to reduce the number of elements from 8 to 7. Some say it's because the 8-element version was too expensive to produce, and there's no doubt that the 7-element version must have been an easier, quicker lens to make at a time when demand for Pentax cameras was very strong around the world. Others maintain the design was changed because the 7-element design was actually a more efficient optical design, and furthermore, the radioactive glass helped to improve the transmission of light through the lens, thereby reducing the need for a more expensive extra element. Whatever the reason, the 7-element Super Tecuma turned out to be an extremely successful and popular lens. Its production ran from 1965 to 1971, and it remains a firm favourite with film and digital photographers to this day. As an aside, if you want to tell the difference between the 8 and 7 elements versions simply by looking at them, then look at the rear glass. If it has more of an outwards curve, it's the 8 elements lens. A second giveaway is an orange infrared line on the markings above the aperture ring. If the line is on the right of the 4, then it's an 8 element. If it's on the left, it's 7 elements. In the early 1970s, AOC developed a new way of applying multiple coats to lenses, and this was incorporated into the Super Multi-Coated Takuma, a lens that still used radioactive glass. Like the 8 element version, it only had a short production run. The final version of the f1.4, before AOC switched to a bayonet mount, was the SMC Takuma. The lens retained the same optics and seven elements design, but AOC decided to replace the all-metal focus ring with a rubberized ring. This final Takuma also has radioactive glass, but the radioactivity emanating from my copy is significantly less than the two previous versions. Indeed, I re-measured the rear elements of the three radioactive versions with my Geiger Muller counter for this video, and the Super Tacoma 7 element lens has the highest maximum radioactive readings, five times the amount of the later SMC model. Now, for many years, indeed decades, I've had rather strong opinions about the relative merits of these lenses. 
It seemed to me that if you wanted the best stop-down performance, then the super multi-coated versions were the ones to buy. The multi-coatings reduced the negative impact of strong light sources and helped to improve contrasts and colours. The colours produced by these lenses could be really good. Since I prefer all metal focus ring to a rubber ring, then the super multi-coated model appealed to me the most, and indeed it was the first one I bought, and I've never regretted it. But then, if you're looking for a lens that produces the most beautiful wide-open bouquet, then I think the lens with the least amount of coatings is probably the best version to buy. That's because lesser coated glass, especially in strong light, tends to produce more washed-out results, more artistic, water-calorie rendering, in situations where you want smoother rather than contrasty bouquet. I'd also noticed anecdotally that the 8-element version appeared to be slightly sharper wide open than later versions. However, I'd never seriously tested this observation, so I decided it was time to try a more rigorous comparison. To do this, I needed to de-yellow a relatively early copy of the 7 elements radioactive lens, something I've resisted doing in the past. By de-yellowing the lens, the speed of the lens and colour rendering will be closer to a clear 8-element lens. The copy I'm using was kindly bought for me in Texas by my American in-laws, and it has a Honeywell Pentax branded lens cap. Honeywell was the official US importer of Pentax gear at a time when the lens was manufactured in Japan. My de-yellowing was reasonably successful, but as you'll see, I haven't been able to completely de-yellow the glass. Nevertheless, it's much clearer than it was when I first got it. So I'll start by considering how the two lenses perform stop-down. By the way, all the comparison photos in this video were taken with a full-frame Pentax K1. Both lenses have six aperture blades, so where you have distinct highlights in your composition, these will show up as hexagons. This transition from wide open to partially stopped down was taken with a 7 elements lens. And here's a video I made with an 8 elements lens, transitioning from stopped down to wide open. This video also gives a good demonstration of the impact that an excellent f1.4 like the Takuma lens can have on the busy background. I think it's a rather beautiful result wide open. After the six bladed lenses, AOC's introduction of two more blades for the later super multi-coated versions is another point in their favour to me. For more standard stop down shots without distinct highlights, the first thing to note is that the 7 elements radioactive lens still has slight yellowing, as you can see in white objects or buildings. They have a more golden tint. I suspect that photographers who enjoy using vintage lenses sometimes rather like this golden tinted look, but personally I prefer to have a clean image that I can tint later. As I've done here with the 7 elements lens using an in-camera filter. Leaving aside these coloration differences, I can't personally see any significant differences in the performance of my copies of these two lenses stopped down. In terms of details, both lenses perform well for more long distance shots. They render better than many of the contemporary European and Soviet Union Fast 50s. I just trust them more than many other vintage Fast 50s I own. And I like how the lenses render stop-down scenes when I'm closer to the subjects. The details are nice and crisp. Now let's get on with a more detailed look at the two lenses' performance wide open. There are various ways to test the wide open performance of lenses, including firstly their sharpness, secondly what the out of focus highlights look like, i.e. the bouquet balls and bubbles, especially away from the centre, and thirdly the way lenses render out of focus areas more generally. The first two can be tested, while the third is a more subjective area, because you're attempting to describe the quality of bouquet, something that's not easily measured, it's more a matter of personal taste. Beginning with sharpness, and here are two photos focused on the lettering at the front of a lens. They're straight out of camera, taken at the minimum focus distance of both lenses at 0.45 metres. 
If I crop into the images so we can look at the lettering closer up, I think it's pretty obvious that the 8 elements lens renders the letters in a sharper way than the 7 elements lens. This type of test is very sensitive to how accurately you nail the focus, given the narrow depth of field. So here are some more examples to prove the findings, including these shots of the Spotmatic's great rival, the Nikon F. Taking the lenses outside to compare images produces the same result. Where I'm reasonably confident that the same part of the image is in focus, the 8 elements lens is sharper. I think one of the main causes of these differences comes from the seven elements tendency to produce ghosting or a glow around in-focus subjects. This tends to distract from a sharper in-focus look. That's the good news for the eight elements lens. Less good news is that the lens produces quite noticeable purple fringing where there is bright light something the seven element lens is less prone to do. There can be a little fringing in more extreme light, but nothing like the eight elements lens. The second wide open test involves the out of focus balls or bubbles produced by the lenses. The results from both lenses look very similar in terms of round bubbles at the center and the look of the cat's eye shapes away from the center. I've always liked the way these fast tachymers render out of focus highlights large bubbles with very clean edges that are not intrusive or lined. And in the right light, super tachymers can produce some stunning bubble bouquet bonanza images wide open, including beautiful flares. Both lenses also show a little swirl to their bubbles, but nothing like a biotar or helios swirl. Finally, we get to the tricky subject of the overall quality of the bouquet produced by these lenses. As a general observation, I think it's reasonable to say that both these lenses are capable of producing rather lovely smooth out of focus blur, as we saw in my test shots for sharpness. But that's not a very insightful analysis, as nearly all fast 50s would produce smooth bouquet in these setups. To try and get a better feel for the quality of bouquet, I've taken both lenses on long walks and tried them with various scenes wide open, using the same camera in the same settings. Here's how I recorded the images of one of the walks, photographing my fingers every time I swap lenses, a single finger for the seven elements lens and a two finger salute for the eight elements lens. Well, what did I learn from all these and other shots? Based on my previous experiences, I was expecting to find the eight elements lens produce slightly more beautiful bouquet. I've always felt the eight is the best bouquet lens of all the Takuma versions. However, the more I looked at the images, the less confidence I became that I could distinguish between the bouquet produced by the two lenses. To put it another way, purely from looking at the out-of-focus areas, I would be quite happy to own either of these lenses. I don't feel like the 8 elements lens produces dramatically different bouquet. That could easily be my final conclusion on bouquet, but I thought I'd take a closer look, under the microscope if you will, to see if I could discern any really subtle differences how the lenses render blur. And I have three exhibits to show you. Please feel free to comment on my analysis of these exhibits. I'll be interested to read if you disagree or agree with my views. Exhibit A is a shot of batteries. Looking at the whole image, there's no apparent difference really between the lenses. But if I crop into the batteries on the right hand side, I think you can begin to see a difference. The batteries from the seven elements lens are slightly better defined. The lettering is a little clearer, while the eight element batteries are slightly softer, slightly less coarse. Personally, I think the eight element bouquet is better. Exhibit B are these kitchen tabletop images. If I crop into the images, take a look at these areas of blur. It's the blur of an out of focus brass chamber stick. To me, the eight elements lens has rendered the blur from the chamber stick in a softer, more subtle way than the seven elements lens. And exhibit C is more about in to out of focus transitions, with this shot of a fence taken on a sunny day under the shade of a tree. Close up, the seven elements lens has produced a more blotchy rendering of these parts of the fence. In contrast, the eight elements lens has given us a smoother, more attractive result. So, what can we conclude from this analysis of my copies of the 8 and 7 element Takuma lenses? 
Firstly, of course, this is about my copies of the lenses. Other lenses may produce different results. I personally own two copies of the 8 elements lens, and the results are very, very similar. But that doesn't mean all of these lenses are identical. They're well over 55 years old, after all. But leaving that aside, we've seen some tangible, measurable differences between the 8 and 7 elements lenses. The 7 elements lens is radioactive, and even after trying to de-yellow the glass, my lens still shows an obvious tint to images. Wide open, the 8 elements lens is sharper, but balanced against that, it does produce more purple fringing in bright light conditions. In terms of the quality of bouquet, my perception is that the 8 elements lens renders out of focus areas in a slightly smoother, more beautiful way, but the differences are marginal. Stop down, I can't see any significant differences apart from that radioactive tint, which you may or may not like. This brings us on to the question of whether the 8 elements version is worth all the extra money it costs to buy today online. And I'm not going to beat about the bush. In my opinion, it is worth the premium. The 8 element lens is a better bouquet lens, and it's not radioactive. Not that a radioactive lens is inherently dangerous to use if you're careful. It's just I prefer a lens without an obvious tint to the images. And although some owners have been able to get rid of this tint completely, it's not something I've been able to do, unlike other radioactive lenses, where I've had more success. On top of this, the 8 element version is a rarer lens, more of a cult lens, that appeals more to collectors, so it's more likely to appreciate in value over the years, or at least retain more of its value. This is not to say I wouldn't recommend a 7 elements version. If you're looking to buy a reasonably priced vintage Fast 50, it's more than a good performer, it's an excellent performer. It just doesn't quite have the star quality of the 8 elements version. If you're looking to buy a 7 elements lens, go for it. My advice would be to try and find one with the least amount of yellowing. And I wouldn't worry about my wide open comparisons under the microscope of sharpness and bouquet. These kinds of comparisons are far less important and relevant than the joy you'll get from taking great photos with your lens. Please let me know what you think about my conclusions in the comments below. All comments are most welcome. And until next time, all the best.